A sleeping respiratory rate greater than 16 breaths per minute is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So let's jump right in and take a look at that data. So on the y-axis, we, we've got percent mortality or percentage of people who died. And this was up to 3,000 days after the initial assessment of the nighttime sleeping respiratory rate. This is a relatively small study of 406 older adults that had an average age of 83.1 years. And then we can see lowest all-cause mortality risk for the group that had a respiratory rate less than 16 breaths per minute as shown in green. In contrast, an increased all-cause mortality risk was present for the group that had a respiratory rate greater than 16 breaths per minute. Now, one factor that may be related to these associations is an older age. And that's because the group that had a respiratory rate greater than 16 breaths per minute was significantly older, 83.4 years for the, for the blue line uh, group, when compared with the group that had a significantly lower all-cause mortality risk with an average age of 82.9 years. And we can see when comparing the ages, 83.4 versus 82.9, and looking at the p-value, the group that had a, a relatively higher respiratory rate greater than 16 breaths per minute was significantly older. Now, in, a, in another study that of, 20, of about 2,700 people with a little bit younger of a cohort, 76.2 years, we can see similar data. So again, we've got uh, the higher all-cause mortality for people who had a re nighttime sleeping respiratory rate greater than 16 breaths per minute for the line in blue, uh, and a significantly lower all-cause mortality for the group that had a nighttime sleeping respiratory rate less than 16 breaths per minute as shown in green. And once again, age or an older age may be contributing to these data as the group that had a significantly increased all-cause mortality risk had an average age of 77 years, and the group that had a uh, reduced uh, all-cause mortality risk for a respiratory rate less than 16 breaths per minute had an average age that was 75.9 years, which was significantly lower than the group that had the average age of 77. So age may be one factor that contributes to a relatively higher nighttime sleeping respiratory rate. Now, there are several questions to, ad to address here. First is, these data indicate that optimizing the nighttime respiratory rate while sleeping may be important for health. So then, how to op with, with that in mind, how is the respiratory rate calculated? Which factors affect the respiratory rate besides potentially advanced age? Which fitness trackers provide respiratory rate data so that we can track it and potentially optimize it? And last but not least, what's my data? So let's go through all of these questions. So first, how is the respiratory rate calculated? The sleeping respiratory rate is derived from heart rate, uh, or HR. So on the y-axis here of this plot, we've got heart, heart rate plotted against time. And then the respiratory rate is calculated with a phenomenon known as respiratory sinus arrhythmia. In other words, heart rate increases upon inhalation, and then heart, heart rate correspondingly decreases upon exhalation. So each inhalation, exhalation, heart rate pair equals one breath. So correspondingly, a higher heart rate while asleep is associated with a higher nighttime sleeping respiratory rate. And we can see that data here. So this is a study of 10,000 men and women, and that this is based on Fitbit data. So Fitbit is at least one fitness tracker that can provide nighttime sleeping respiratory rate. So on the y-axis again, we've got the respiratory rate in breaths per minute, and this time we've got heart rate or resting heart rate plotted in beats per minute on the x-axis. And what we can see is that as heart rate increases above 45 beats per minute all the way up to 85, correspondingly, the respiratory rate also increases. Now, if we look at the data from the last slide with that 16 breaths per minute cutoff for all-cause mortality risk, we can see that people, uh, the, the resting heart rate cutoff for that uh, for that respiratory rate of 16 breaths per minute would be a resting heart rate of 75 beats per minute. So for people who have a resting heart rate of 7, 75 beats per minute, it's possible that they've got a relatively high respiratory rate, which would put them at an increased all-cause mortality risk. All right, so which fitness trackers provide respiratory rate data? We already know Fitbit, but are there others? So Oura Ring, Whoop, and Apple Watch each provide respiratory rate data. Now, this is just a small sn snapshot. There may be other fitness trackers that provide that data, but I know for certain that these uh, fitness trackers provide that data. So we can see that here, Aura provides it. We can see that there in the right corner for Whoop, and we can also see it for the Apple Watch. All right, so then besides heart rate, which factors impact the respiratory rate with the goal of optimizing it to below 16 breaths per minute? So having a relatively higher BMI, more specifically greater than 26 uh, kilograms per meter squared, is associated with a higher respiratory rate. And we can see that here. This is from the same study of 10,000 men and women derived from Fitbit data. 
So respiratory rate on the y-axis plotted against BMI on the x. And then we can see as BMI is higher than 26 uh, kilograms per meter squared, we can see that the respiratory rate correspondingly increases. And conversely, the lowest respiratory rate in the study was found at about a BMI of 25. And actually, lower is not necessarily better, at least based on this population-based study. We can see that people who had BMIs less than 20, it looks like they had higher respiratory rates relative to someone with a BMI of 25. Now, this then raises the question, is body weight significantly associated with respiratory rate at the individual level? Does my own data correspond to the population-based data? So with that in mind, let's take, take a look at my respiratory rate data over the last uh, 567 days as shown here. So we've got respiratory rate on the y-axis and this is plotted against body weight and I've met, I, I weigh myself every morning after number one and number two. Uh, and this is again, 567 days of data from March of 2021 through October of 2022. And what we can see is that the respiratory rate, RR, is significantly correlated with body weight in my own data with a correlation coefficient of 0.17 and a significant p-value 0.02. Now, although that's a weak correlation, 0.17, it's still a significant correlation as shown by the p-value. So what that suggests is that a higher respiratory rate is significantly correlated with higher body weight, at least in my data. It may be different for others. And conversely, a lower respiratory rate is significantly correlated with lower body weight. Again, in my data, and it may be different for others. So these data are in contrast with that population-based study that I just showed, where in my case, the respiratory rate increases from a BMI of 23.6 up to 25.4. In the earlier study, we saw that the lowest uh, that, that the respiratory rate declines from relatively low BMIs down to 25. In contrast, my, B, uh, my respiratory rate increases as my uh, body weight has increased. Now, another factor that may impact the nighttime sleeping respiratory rate is immune activation. So we can start to see that here. So when using that 16 breaths per minute cutoff uh, based on the all-cause mortality data, we can see that only three days out of the 567 days that I've tracked respiratory rate have been higher than 16 breaths per minute in my, uh, in my data. And that's because on the night of vaccine dose number two, it was exactly 16 breaths per minute. And then for the day of and the day after vaccine dose number three, it was again greater or it was greater than 16 breaths per minute. So the only days I've ever had a resp respiratory rate greater than 16 breaths per minute was uh, as a result of vaccination and more specifically, probably the immune activation that's related to that, which then raises the question, do older adults with a respiratory rate greater than 16 breaths per minute have chronic immune activation, whether that's through infection, infection with undiagnosed infection with bacteria, fungi, viruses, etc. A topic for another day. That's all for now. If you're interested more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in. Epigenetic testing, testing the oral microbiome, at-home blood testing, tracking your diet. Or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee, and all these links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.